Hi everyone, so this is a subscriber request video and it is my experience in doing IVF. I shared with you guys a couple of weeks ago that Rocco, myself and Tom are expecting a new family member. I am almost four months pregnant and this was this baby was conceived through IVF as was Rocco and it was help, paid for with help from the thousand dollar project. The thousand dollar project is quite ironic because the thousand dollar project to me is about making your life that little bit easier and taking that financial stress and pressure off your shoulders and as it turned out for round three IVF not only helped make life easier but also it helped create a life which is a really beautiful thing. Now when I shared this with you on my Instagram account I had so many people messaging me asking me why I had to do IVF, how much did it cost, how did I pay for it, um, what was my experience um, and what advice I would give for doing IVF. So I thought it would be much easier to just make this video for you where you can share this video with anyone you know that's having trouble falling pregnant, is thinking of doing IVF or is in the thick of IVF. So I really hope this video helps those people out there because you are not alone. First question I got asked was, why did I have to do IVF in the first place? There's actually nothing wrong with me medically. I have normal cycles, I ovulate, I get my period, um, it, it, all my level hormone levels were perfectly fine. However, for some reason, I just can't fertilize an embryo. And I have never fallen pregnant and I've always actually had this really strong feeling or intuition that something wasn't right and that I would never be able to have children naturally. And as it turned out, it was correct. Now the next question that I got asked was, how did I feel about having to do IVF? Initially, I was really disappointed in myself and my body that I couldn't conceive a child naturally. As one of the many things that women can do and women's bodies can do, it's the one thing that I just couldn't. And I felt a little bit like a failure and a little bit depressed about that. But I had to draw a line in the sand and stop feeling like a victim and feeling sorry for myself, but just get on with it and move to a place of gratitude, being so grateful that IVF is an option available to me. The IVF presented an opportunity to have a go at trying something different. And if I think about it, we are so lucky to actually have IVF available now and available in this country because there are so many women out there who never got the opportunity to do IVF because it hadn't been created yet or it just simply isn't available where they live in the world. So the moment I stepped into a place of being grateful to be able to have a go at doing IVF, all that resentment, that disappointment in myself disappeared. The next question that I got asked was how did I fit IVF into my busy lifestyle and how did I cope? Well, the best advice I can give someone who's about to do IVF is give yourself a lot of time and a lot of breathing space for a roller coaster of emotions. I had to be in the city for scans at 7 a.m. in the morning, which meant getting up early, um, going into the city, um, being poked and prodded all the time, sometimes every other day, sometimes even every day. And it also meant, because the way my body was reacting and sometimes overreacting and underreacting to certain medication, during the middle of the day, I would get a phone call saying, your results have come in, we need to change your medication, can you urgently come back into the city so we can give you some new medication to try. And it literally meant I had to drop everything at work, run back into the city, get this medication, pay for it and come back home and then catch up on my work. My advice is clear your schedule. IVF is almost like another job. It involves so much time and so much energy and you are literally a pin cushion. You are being poked and prodded and you are being injected with so many different hormones that do so many different things. And you become quite highly strung, quite anxious, very emotional and you're very, I would snap quite easily. And whilst I tried to just calm down, meditate, you know, focus on a place of being grateful for doing IVF, there are times where I just couldn't pull it together. So Tom and I were extremely open and transparent with people that we were doing IVF so that we could explain to people, you know, why I was maybe a bit emotional or highly strung. Tom could also be supportive and give me the breathing space and also, we just are very open people. We didn't want to hide it from people. We wanted people to understand what we were going through so that if you know they could 
they could also support us back or encourage us or just simply let us know that they were thinking of us. Those little things really counted. We didn't want to close doors. We were very, very open about this and I'm so glad we were this way because it, people felt closer to us because we were able to share where we were up to, what we were going, how it was looking, how it was tracking. So my advice to anyone that's going through IVF, don't feel like you can't, you have to hide it from people. Share with people that you, this is what you're doing. They'll give you the breathing space and the support that you need to get through it because it is not easy. And as I said, it takes a lot of time. And if it means cutting back from work, going part time to take care of yourself, then that is absolutely fine. The next question that I got asked was, how did I tell Rocco about this? Well, Rocco is five and a half and he knew that we'd been trying to make him a baby brother um, or sister for a really long time. In fact, he um, probably wanted a sibling um, just as much as Tom and I. So I had to explain to Rocco that my tummy is broken and I can't make a baby normally and I have to get the help of a doctor. And I didn't want Rocco getting scared or worried um, seeing me inject myself, seeing me taking lots of medication and coming with me into the city to be poked and prodded all the time. So I was really open and honest and transparent with him. I shared with him what we were doing. I explained to them that it may not work and we may need to do this for quite some time. And I explained to him that this is actually where he was made, where he was created. And it was actually a really beautiful thing because Rocco was so involved. And even though I had to like pull him out of bed early in the morning to take him into the city with me for the appointments, not once did he ever complain. He understood what we were doing with this. And it's really quite funny because I was chatting with Rocco the other day about Apple, which is the nickname he's given the baby. And he actually feels like he helped make the baby. Um, he feels like he was really a big part of this. And he's so, he's so involved and so engaged in the whole experience of now being pregnant. Every, every Sunday, he looks on my phone to see how big Apple is growing, where the video of Apple and what you know, development it's got, whether it's got nails, whether it's got hair, how long it is, how much it weighs. He's really interested and it's a really beautiful thing because he feels as he feels like he's part of this journey and he is part of this journey but i wanted i felt that he was old enough to understand what we're doing and also understand the risks involved and he has been an absolute superstar and champion with not a single complaint and being so understanding the whole way through now the next question was how where did i do ivf and how much did it cost I don't feel comfortable disclosing the exact cost because um, I do want to keep some sort of privacy for Tom and myself, but it wasn't cheap. And we definitely went through probably the most expensive option because I wanted to go back to my doctor that helped create Rocco because he knew my body, he knew my problems, and he knew that just not to waste any time that would get straight on to it. And that he gave me really valuable advice, which I was more than happy to pay for. Now, for people going through IVF, they are, are on a budget and um, want to look at alternative options. You can use places like primary healthcare, where it is significantly cheaper um, to do IVF. It's a different process. There's not as much hand-holding and not as much, I guess, uh, not as higher level as care as what Janae um, offered me, but it's definitely a much, much more cost-effective way of doing IVF. And of course, there's also IVF Australia. So my advice to anyone who's thinking about doing um, IVF or is have struggling to fall pregnant and looking at all the different options before doing IVF, um, I would recommend looking at all the different organizations that offer IVF, getting quotes from them, meeting different doctors and really doing your research and then going with the place that you feel is the best place of all. The next question is actually not some, a question that someone asked me, but it's something I really wanted to share with you. And that was, what was the best thing about doing IVF? And I have to say this really defining powerful moment was made, what made me realize why I'm doing IVF and why I had to do IVF in my own journey. And that is when I was lying there and the doctor was implanting the embryo and you get to lie there and you get to watch this embryo being implanted into your body on a screen. It is the most amazing, beautiful moment. And of course, yes, there is the risk that it doesn't work. But when you conceive a child or a baby naturally, you don't get to see this. And there is something just breathtakingly powerful and beautiful of watching this 
thing be inserted and you watch this bubble come up on the screen and it gets implanted and that's it it's magical and for me that was what made IVF whether it worked or not all worth it because that two seconds of this beautiful moment of this opportunity this this dream this amazing thing being implanted in you with the potential to to create a human life it was so special and that's what made all the injections the time the running backwards and forwards the emotional highs and lows it made it all worth it so i really hope this video gives you an insight as to what i experienced from doing ivf if you're going to do ivf or you're about to do ivf please know that you are going to go through a roller coaster of emotions and that is perfectly normal and acceptable give people warning let them know what you're doing so they can give you some advice and they can give you the right type of support that you need also remember IVF is almost like a part-time job. Give yourself time, clear your schedule, be kind to yourself, make sure you have time off to yourself to fill your bucket as Rocco says, because you are going to be going backwards and forwards and you to, into clinics and blood tests and being poked and prodded, but it is all part of the process of what they need to do to help hopefully create that special baby that will come into your life. And for anyone out there that is struggling to fall pregnant, please know that my heart goes out to you. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. Please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and switch on that notification button. And in more videos that I have coming up, I will be sharing with you how I am going to afford to pay for this baby and how I'm going to be juggling having a second child, motherhood, and working for myself in a busy modern day world. All right, everyone, stay tuned and I will see you next week for Money Monday. Ciao.